Please rise. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord Jesus Christ. The words for our meditation this evening are written for us in Matthew chapter 1. This is how the birth of Jesus Christ took place. His mother Mary was pledged in marriage to Joseph. Before they came together, she was found to be with child by the Holy Spirit. Joseph, her husband, was a righteous man. He did not want to disgrace her, so he decided to divorce her privately. But as he was considering these things, an angel of the Lord suddenly appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife because the child conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. You may be seated. Dear friends, as soon as those two bars appeared on the test, they were too shocked to even think about it. It didn't feel real. They didn't even tell anyone. They barely talked to each other about how their life was just about to change. But then once they had their first appointment and they heard that little peanut's heart beating on the ultrasound, their excitement suddenly became real. Finally, they could say that word, baby out loud now they started talking about it with their family and friends now they started thinking about names all those names that were possible to name their child they of course crossed off the names of their nieces and nephews and their friends kids they didn't need to have duplicates they had a manageable list he had his favorites she hers hers Maybe Liam or Asher for a boy or Olivia or Hazel for a girl. And they also knew in a few weeks that list too would be cut in half. You see, no one's surprised in the re delivery room anymore. The next ultrasound will reveal what sort of name they needed, whether a boy's or a girl's. A baby is always a reason to celebrate. A new life is always a source of joy. But we know for as much energy as parents invest in choosing a name, the name is secondary. The child is the source of joy. But this Advent, as we look at the names that the Bible gives to God's own Son, and we see those names themselves are a source of comfort and joy. They teach us who Jesus is. They t promise us God's own gifts. And tonight's name of comfort and joy is Jesus, our sa Savior. He fills and he fulfills all of God's word. Joseph wasn't feeling joyful. He didn't need to have an advanced biology class to know that he wasn't the father. And that meant that someone else was. And it made him so sad. Yes, he was sad for his future. For the family that he had been planning, that he was imagining. But he was also sad for Mary. Someone had destroyed and ruined her life. He was also embarrassed. You see, Joseph didn't know what Mary knew. He learned that she was with child, but he didn't know that it was from the Holy Spirit. When that angel had appeared to her to make that announcement, she had gone off to share her joy and excitement with her relative, Elizabeth. When Joseph learned, he didn't know what to think. He had every right not only to break that engagement, but he had every right to have her stoned for adultery. But he couldn't bring himself to go that far. 
At the same time, neither could he go through with the marriage. He was a righteous man. He deserved a righteous wife. And he was not about to confess to his community a sin that he did not commit. He would not take Mary into his home to be his wife. Everyone would then think that they just couldn't wait for their wedding. Probably wasn't the first time something like that had happened. No, he would not bear He did not raise another man's offspring. He would not bear another man's shame. No, he would dismiss her quietly. People might talk. They might guess. Maybe somehow that man would do the honorable thing and take care of Mary. But Joseph would have maintained his righteousness in the community. He would have made a decision that he could live with. If you're planning to host your Christmas party this year and have company, now is about the time that you have to start cleaning. Because the more people in your home, the more eyes there are to seek out that little corner where that mess remains. And when people are going to be eating food off of your table, they're going to be looking awfully carefully at what's going on in the kitchen. And of course, inevitably, someone's going to be snooping around. How closely do you want anyone to look at your home? It doesn't matter how much you clean. Someone's likely going to find that one place that you just didn't quite get to. How well do you want anyone to look? Our lives are often like our homes when company is about to arrive. We make sure that the things that people see look bright and clean and pure. We want them to think the best of us. And so we put on that clean facade and hope that no one looks too closely. As Joseph agonized over what to do, he wanted to make sure that his own righteousness was not tarnished. He wanted everyone to know what kind of man he was. And then an angel of the Lord came to him in a dream. Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife. The angel came to set his mind at ease. He gave him an important piece of the puzzle that Joseph had been missing because the child which is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She has not shamed you. She has not harmed you. Do not treat her as if she is unclean. Joseph, do not be worried or afraid about her. But of course, that's only half of Joseph's fear. So the angel's message continues. She will give birth to a son and you are to give him the name Jesus because he will save his people from their sins. Joseph, you do not need to fear for your righteousness. You are afraid of being sinful appearing impure before your God and for your people. Well, this child comes for you. This child is for your sins, for your righteousness. Do not be afraid, Joseph. This child comes to save you from your sins. The name that that angel gave, Jesus, as we say it in English, is in a, our attempt to say in a, a Greek interpretation of a Hebrew or Aramaic name, Yeshua. But Greek doesn't have all of those sounds. And Greek is not comfortable with silent letters. And so they had to get the name Jesus or Jesu, Jesus. The name itself is a combination of two words. A shortened version of the Lord's name and the word that means save. So Jesus literally means Yahweh saves. The Lord saves. The name is a promise. It can be used as a cry for help. Lord, save. It can also be used as a statement of confidence. The Lord is salvation. 
Now in this baby growing in Mary's womb, it is the fulfillment of a promise. It is the answer to a cry for help. The Lord saves. The Lord is the salvation of his people. And so this is what that name Jesus means to you. Do not be afraid. The Lord saves. All the sins we wish we could hide, he will wash away. All the guilt we carry on our hearts and before the world, he will take. All the shame we feel. When we feel embarrassed that we aren't better, that others may see our mistakes and our sins or may accuse us of sins that we have not even committed, he will remove. This is why he comes. The Lord saves. This is why he lives. This is why he would suffer. This is why he would die. It is in his own name. The Lord is your salvation. This is the message of his name, of his birth, and of his resurrection. This is God's promise. Do not be afraid. Jesus is your forgiveness. Jesus is your righteousness. Jesus is your life. Jesus is your name of comfort and joy. In those days, they weren't keeping statistics on the most popular baby names of each and every year. However, Jesus was not unique or an uncommon name. That's why he is always called Jesus bar Joseph, that is Jesus son of Joseph, or even more commonly, Jesus of Nazareth. That way everyone knew which Jesus they were talking about. The, our own translations from the Greek, which is also a translation from the Hebrew and the Aramaic, doesn't help us to see this next truth. It doesn't help us to connect the name Jesus to two other famous heroes from the Old Testament. We call them Joshua. In Greek, it's Jesus. We are fairly familiar with Joshua, son of Nun, Moses' assistant, the explorer of the promised land, leader in battle, faithful in everything, who led God's people across the Jordan and courageously did everything the Lord had given him. Tonight we heard a portion of his farewell sermon as he sent God's people safe to their homes. We are probably less familiar with Jeshua, as they would have called him after the exile, the priest. He was among God's people when they went from their homes, went to their homes from Babylon. He rebuilt the altar of the Lord. He offered sacrifices there for the people. He oversaw the rebuilding of the temple and led the people in singing their praises to God. Both of them, Joshua, Jeshua, or Jesus, whatever name you want to call them, the Lord is salvation. Both of them were leaders when God kept his promises to his people. They were living testimonies that indeed the Lord saves. God's people would have looked back with a whimsical longing. When would God do this again? God did amazing things through those men. He kept his word, but each of them died before that work was complete. God gave his people the promised land, but they never had that perfect rest which they longed for. Sin led them to centuries of turmoil. God brought his people back to Jerusalem, they rebuilt the temple. They rebuilt its walls. They were in the city of David, but they never had again a king to sit on David's throne. Then the angel came to Joseph, and he called him Joseph, son of David. Now after all those long centuries, the fulfillment was here. Jesus, the Lord saves, the Lord is salvation, had entered the world. He was in the womb of the Virgin Mary, and Joseph would be the legal father to the eternal king, just as God had promised. Thirty years later, 
The Pharisees and teachers of the law, the Sadducees and the political establishment were all trying to figure out what to make of this Jesus of Nazareth. He was doing miracles. He was gathering crowds. He was speaking with authority. What did it mean? And Jesus himself told them, You diligently search the scriptures because you think you have eternal life in them. These are the scriptures that testify about me. My friends, what a gift God gave to Joseph. What a gift he gives us when we learn the name Jesus. Because that name is written all over God's word. He is the topic of every page. Jesus, the Lord is salvation, is the fulfillment of it all. The Lord's name is written there for everyone who wants to see to hear and believe. Jesus is the blessing Jacob gave to his sons. I have waited for your salvation, Lord. Jesus was on David's lips when he faced the giant. The battle belongs to the Lord and he will deliver me. Jesus is the song of the Psalms and the prayer of God's people's hearts. The Lord has made his salvation known. I will call on the name of the Lord Ah, Lord, save my life. Jesus is the comfort of his people in times of trouble. Surely it is God who saves me. I will trust him and not be afraid because Yah, the Lord, is my strength and my song. And he has become my salvation. As Babylon turned towards Judah, Habakkuk told God's people to turn to Jesus. But I will delight in the Lord and rejoice in God who saves me. In Jerome's Vulgate translation, that verse in Latin even says, I will rejoice in my God, Jesus. A baby is always a source of excitement. And this child was excitement not only for her and for Joseph, but for the whole world. Whether or not Jesus was the most popular name that year he was born, the name Jesus has become the most well-known and most important name in all of history. The name Jesus was on the lips of all the Old Testament saints. He was the promise they all trusted. As Mary held her belly and Joseph heard his name, that promise was coming true. Then like the Joshua's before him, Jesus completed the work God had given him to do. He is the Lord, your salvation, the Lord who saves. This is why his name is above every name and why at this name, at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. Jesus is the name of your comfort and your joy forever because Jesus, the Lord, saves. Amen. Please rise. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. <laughs> ¶¶